What's going on you guys? Paul here with Paul's Performance and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the TDI Toyota. I've had countless, countless amounts of comments. A lot of love from you guys, appreciate the compliments and stuff, but I've had a lot of questions about different subsystems of the TDI swap, how I did a lot of things, and I'm trying to get to all the questions as quickly as possible, I'm trying to get some videos in on different subsystems. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the turbo energy cooler intake system kind of as all together every, all the connections for the turbo I've had uh, quite a bit of questions on that I'm gonna start that off here so let's get under the hood and let me kind of go over my setup that I have right now some changes I'd like to make and I said if I've had any issues so let's get under here first things first we're gonna start at the air intake system there's many different options you can do for this to custom fab your air intake for me I went on Amazon as a lot of you probably will be doing and I bought this two inch intercooler piping kit that come with all these different bins, pipe lengths and uh, all these clamps. And that's what I used to build this entire system. It was very cheap and it was very easy to kind of fab up uh, what I needed because it already had, you know, a bunch of 90s and U's and all that jazz. So that's what I used to build all the intercooler piping plus my intake. So for my intake right now, I just have a Spectre filter that I got from the parts store. Not what I really want to use. I just still haven't gotten around to taking it back off and putting on um, a little bit better filter, but it works. It does the deed. I'm not in dusty environments, so I'll get it replaced uh, here soon i have an adapter down to this two inch because the filter housing was a little bit bigger i have it mounted up in here i built me a custom mount it comes around and goes down into the front of the turbo i also added in the same little intake hose that would go to the factory volkswagen so i threaded that into this piping that's pretty simple like i said it may vary for you guys but so now we're going to move on to the intercooler setup as far as the turbo goes the turbo is the stock turbo that come out of the car i have haven't upgraded it yet because there's nothing wrong with it. So I left the stock turbo set up in there. As far as the exhaust, the downpipe setup, if you guys check out my exhaust video on this, you'll see how I ran the exhaust back from the turbo. I used the original flange off of the car. I cut it off and then welded my new exhaust system onto that flange. That way I didn't have to have a flange made or buy another one. So I reused that from the car. So now we're gonna move on to my intercooler setup. For my intercooler setup, I did a lot of research on these cars trying to figure out what's going to be the easiest way i see a lot of different ways on youtube of how to do your intercooler and there is there's plenty of different ways to do it i've seen some really clean setups uh, with a lot of fabrication work for me i really didn't want to have to do all that work i was trying to make this swap as quick and as easy as possible and i really didn't want to have to do a lot of uh, cutting to my front end or grill to get rid of you know stuff to where i would have to fit a front mounted intercooler. So I took a little bit of notes from the uh, Volkswagen intercooler system where it is mounted on the car. It is actually kind of mounted up into the fender well back behind the front bumper on the car. You know, on the car, it's not even mounted into the front for a completely, you know, great airflow. I know they have it designed to where it will pull air into it. So I was like, well, that's great. And then I also found obviously for this system and really most systems, you, you, you wouldn't technically have to have an intercooler, but it does run a lot more efficiently with an intercooler so I wanted to make sure that I kept it so what I did is I found a very small intercooler identical to the size of the factory intercooler that was on the car but the only difference I couldn't use the one on the car is because of the uh, inlet and uh, exit on the intercooler were in spots that I could not make work so I had to find one where they were both on one end of the intercooler. So I found a Renault GT intercooler on eBay that had both inlet and outlet on the top of the intercooler that was the same size, and then I mounted it into the engine bay right here. Now it did come with an electric fan, which I was going to install. I may end up installing it at a later date. I, I just ended up not doing it during the swap, and I left it just with the intercooler, and so far it's, it's done fine. I may install the, the electric fan at a later date to give it a little bit more airflow to where it's at but the way i have it in here it has a pretty good flow of air 
uh, coming in from the front of the Toyota. And then as far as my intercooler piping, I used the same two inch intercooler piping kit that I ordered off of Amazon with all the boots. The only difference is, is I had to get downsizer boots that come off of the Renault's intercooler because it was a one size, I think it's two and a quarter. So I had to get Mishimoto uh, downsizers. You don't have to get Mishimoto, but that's just the ones I found. And also with me mounting it right here in the engine bay, it makes it super easy for me to remove this intercooler if I need to. And two, I had very little piping work to do. The only downside to this is like I said, if you put it in the front end and fabricate that, you probably will get a little bit better airflow. You may see a power gain, but that's mainly for, you know, for those of you power guys out there. This, this truck is only tuned to 100 horsepower. I was trying to leave it stock. I just want a daily driver, so I'm not too concerned with the power difference of it being in the front. The only downside I ran into, which really isn't that bad, which just really with the motor placement, is I do have a little rub right here on the hood, which I have fixed by just adjusting the hood a little bit. But other than that, this was super easy to do. Put together this system comparative to me having to run intercooler piping into the front of the truck and cut up, you know, behind my grill and try to make it fit. Cause I do plan on adding AC. So that was the biggest thing for me. I wanted to make sure I still had room for a condenser for whenever I add AC to this truck. I really didn't want to put the intercooler up there cause that would take up a lot of space. And I didn't want it to be noticeable from the front end either that this truck is not a, just a regular Toyota. The other things I wanted to talk about as far as the boost system and really I would say the most complicated part about this setup that I that I ran into. First off with the mounting of the actual intercooler itself, the bottom of this intercooler comes with two little prongs coming off of the bottom of it. They're kind of diagonal from each other and they're made to sit down into like some grommets, some rubber grommets, same way kind of any radiator is. So all I had to do was make a little bracket on the bottom of the frame and put two grommets in for the you know where I wanted it to sit and this just slides down into those grommets and the upper half of the intercooler is actually held into place by the piping piping being really short like I said once it's tightened up the piping makes it to where it has very little wiggle room to move anywhere so that kind of holds it into place you know it gets it a little bit more stable now the only other thing that I want to talk about is the map sensor or the boost sensor whatever you guys want to call it and how I integrated it into to this system. So I actually have it down here on this intercooler pipe right here and it's kind of hard to see because it's on the inside. Basically what I did was I may end up moving the sensor. This is an aluminum pipe. This intercooler pipe kit that I got was aluminum. That was a little bit of a struggle for me. I was like how am I going to get a flange to mount this sensor. Fortunately enough, uh, you can go on Amazon and buy a little aluminum flange that bolts right to that for that sensor. I'll leave the uh, link in the description, hopefully, if I can find it. I bought this flange, a little aluminum flange, ordered it, come back in, grinded you know, the pipe down to bare aluminum, drilled me a hole where you know the sensor could go through the piping. I actually bought some Hobart aluminum like brazing rod and I brazed it onto it. And I was a little concerned about that. The pipe is super thin, so I was like, I, I can't really weld it which I don't have I don't have an, a way to weld aluminum here I'd have to take it somewhere to the pipe is this you know intercooler pipe is very thin so I, I found this Hobart aluminum brazing rod and I brazed it on there and I was like well it's worth a shot and so far I have had zero issues like it as soon as I got it on there and braced it up it seemed like a very strong bond and I've had zero boost issues no leaks no nothing so so far so good and it's been on there a while and it hasn't fell off so I'm actually very impressed with that particular uh, process, something new to me. That's how I got that uh, on there. And then, like I said, mount the sensor in and that was it. So as far as the boost system goes for intercooler setup and all that, that was it. I tried to make it as easy as possible on myself, less piping, less fabrication work. So that's my setup. Like I said, I know it's probably not the uh, most perfect, but it does work. It, it saved me a lot of time for this particular system. I hope this helps you guys with your boost system. You don't have to do it this way at all. This was just my setup. I would say if you're building uh, more of a powerhouse of a swap and you want to make more power, you know, and you have a bigger turbo and stuff like that, and you're having, you know, 
cooling issues, I would probably suggest maybe a different setup. But if you're going with a stock setup swap like me, th this setup works perfectly fine. For those of you guys who are planning on making bigger power, you may want to have a different setup than, than what I've done here. So hope this helps you guys. If you have any questions, you know, leave the questions in the comments. I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. And also one big thing, appreciate you guys for getting me to 500 subscribers. Like I said, never expected for this channel to even make it past 100, but we're past 500 now. So I appreciate you guys for subscribing. But like I said, as always, please like and subscribe and see you guys in the next one.